The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello everyone, Basil Chapman, good to be back. This is Tuesday of uh, June. We're right in the middle of the month. <clears throat> Talking about the middle of the month, look at that red candle in the Dow. I must update it, didn't have a chance. Uh, I think I made a mistake here. There's a 44, so let's see, 30,000. Yep, let's do that quickly. <clears throat> 44, got it. Got it here, 30,635. Nope, not anymore. Uh, we've got talking about 30,144. And here I forgot the one extra four. All right, we're all set. There we go. <clears throat> Just needed to catch that up and got it. Really, there we go. Chapman Wave Methodology is a particular technique that I talk about. I'm always talking about three particular uh, directional moves, straight up and straight down, number one, cup formation, number two, arch formation, number three. You can have a mix of one and two or one and three. One and three, straight down, make it red, because if it makes the arch and fails at a peak A or B, first or second peak, and then takes out the left side low significantly, you have two, maybe three bars in which to close above that low, or you could go down significantly unless you get a, a, a really, a, a very, an intrinsic buy signal that's about to go to a buy mode very quickly. We have no idea what's going to happen now because it's just the first pop-up from the low that was made below the 30,635 low of the 20th. We went down to 30,144 uh, yesterday, intraday. <clears throat> Now, one of the reasons I said to subscribers is that I want to go long here. This is, we've got a huge cash position. I want to start putting that money to work in various areas. So we've got uh, three new positions. Uh, one is uh, brand new. We've already tried it out a couple of times and we're trying it out again. It's really a conglomerate of a particular, uh, uh, let's call it an ETF, uh, that has a mix of all the the stocks that were fantastic winners, and they they just took between 70 and some of the even 90% declines. So even if they have just a decent rally, at least we're in a sector that has the potential to move higher with a percentage basis so we can raise our stop and we can start preparing to see, are we going to look, okay, let's get rid of this now, we don't need any more. Are we about to get something that is even more significant and we haven't seen for quite a while, and that is within the Chapman Wave methodology, are we about to get this particular pattern? And the pattern is try to identify a low bar that could be a low bar of significance. And then you start counting each successively higher peak and alphabetize them A through G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. But the target is to be able to go from a buy signal. We haven't even got the start at the moment of a buy signal. And then if we can get to a leg B and it's significant enough with the technicals turning and this is going to require something absolutely phenomenal by the end of the day, certainly by tomorrow, certainly by Friday's close on a weekly basis uh, on the upside, just I don't care what the Fed says. Whatever the Fed says, it's the market reaction that we're looking at, and that's what we're anticipating, the market reaction. So within that context, we want to have a buy signal at some point by maybe two, Monday or Tuesday of this coming week that gets upgraded to a buy mode with the implication there should be at least four higher peaks in the Chapman Wave buy mode. Yes, it can go higher. It can even recycle at a peak D within three bars to a brand new buy mode. I mean, it's an unbelievable technique. I, we're not even, we're here. Look, we're, we, we're looking at the start. We haven't, don't even know if it's a start because of the, we haven't even made a trough from yesterday's low on a closing basis. If we go under 30,144, it's all over in the next day or two. But most importantly, this is the way we use the technique. So why did I, why did I look at it this way? Because if you look, here's the, S, here's, the, here's the DOG. That's one-to-one -one short 
the Tao. When it had this cup formation, ran strongly to a new recovery high, 36.65 was the high in May, then it pulled back to where? The most important 200 period moving average, the longer term moving average that you don't need until you need it. And look at this, we had about eight sessions, nine sessions, hugging this, trying to test, 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 and then bam, we had that big sudden three-day smile. Look at those gaps, three-day gaps, two, two, two gaps on a three-day gap up. And we make a high yesterday of 30, oh, I forgot to put that in. I think it was 37.10, uh, 37.06, 37.06. And now what I, we want to do, and this is what I was thinking of yesterday as we were doing this, because we did not know what the bar would look like, we were here and we had broken above the previous high, but I was measuring the verticals at the high that was made on the, I think that was the 20th or 3665 in the DOG, and then the high that was possibly coming in, and this was done on Monday night. Yeah, Monday. Uh, were, were you Monday? Yes, I was away yesterday. So it was Monday, right there. And I said, uh-oh, yes, the stochastic went over 84%. That's good. Yes, the on-balance volume is very good. Yes, the MACD crossed positive. All I can say is it's the cup formation and how it closes, if it does close underneath the left side high of 36.65, is going to be really important. But the most important thing to me was that the VIX index, there it is, the VIX index had had this spiral under from the Friday close, that Monday spiral to the upside, failed to get above 36.54, the high of the 2nd of May, and it said to me, that in this particular instance, the technicals were not nearly as strong. So there was a chance that if I was able to time it for subscribers yesterday to go to go on the long side, that we could get the timing to the point where we have a decent cushion. Some of it worked for the cushion. Some of it we'll have to see today whether we've got the cushion. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, we have, this is one of the more uh, significant moves to the upside that I'm anticipating in the long position, having started to put money to work from our big cash position. Whew, got that out the way. Q, 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 one, two, three. Look what happened. 280.21 was the low on the 23rd of May. It runs up just about 310, makes a peak B minus because it took out that low. So for three days, it was underneath the low of uh, 280.21. Even today, the low is 278.70. So this is the third day. It's really important that it closes above 280.21. Now, what it does say is I still have to wait for the technicals, meaning the stochastic, the MACD, the on-balance volume, um, even the nine-period moving average under the 14-period to actually start to, to move quite a bit higher to even get a, a chance of a sell, a buy signal that has the possibility of a buy mode. Okay, we've got that out the way. IWM, you remember what I said? The IW, oh, and the other thing is that the IWM, 168.90 was the low of 23rd, was it? Uh, 12, sorry, the 12th of May. And then on the 14th, that's yesterday, we went to 167.74. We broke that left side low in the dreaded H pattern. So that's down to sell mode for all the indices. This turnaround now at a, a protection trough F at 167 says the IWM has to fight. Thank you. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks. I'll just ask you to repeat that, the, the statement I'd made just as we're going to the break. Yes, the IWM, there are a couple of things, uh, and I have to uh, uh, thank one of my subscribers for giving me this information, of course, coinciding with the Fibonacci expansion to 161 at 168, um, the, the IWM went under 168 briefly yesterday, closed above it, uh, but the 168.90 low that was made, remember I had said that the, the daily chart of the IWM, the Russell 2000, was a way better chart than most of the others that we were looking at. And then we actually went to a peak D and then turned down from a buy mode just on the daily chart to a, to a sell signal to a sell mode because it took out the in the dreaded H, it took out the left side low. And this only had has two days and today is the first day to go above 168.90. The day is young. Will it close above 168.90? If it does that, just on a very short term basis, the IWM has done very nicely in the daily chart. The weekly chart just makes lower lows and lower highs in this dreaded H pattern, and it's gone to a leg F. It's one of the deepest corrections we've had. Uh, maybe SMHs, let me check the SMHs. Yeah, SMHs recycled. They went to a G slash B, actually. Ooh, ah, E, ah. A, a G slash B in the weekly chart. Let me get that B in. There it is. B, and then now it's in the leg C to the downside. But on the downside, I don't put as much, uh, I put a lot, but not as much emphasis. Let me just get this down here. On the chat wave uh, notation to the downside. On the upside, I'm really strict about the notation. But on the downside, because of the way, I guess over the years, I've been able to use the, let me make that green. I've been able to use the the technicals like the MACD, the stochastic, the pattern involved, the arch pattern, etc. Um, I've used it in such a way that yes, it is important, but it's not the most important thing. And there's a chance that this lowest low uh, in the SMHs, which was yesterday at below the two uh, thirteen point twenty three low of the twelfth of May, we went down to two ten. Point thirty-two, two ten point thirty-two, two two ten, point thirty-two, 
um, is much lower. Right now we're at 215.79, and the technicals here are in a little bit more mature position of turning around, but still looking really weak. So what do we expect? To get a really strong move to the upside in the general market, the SMHs have gone to lower lows and lower highs. Oh, over and over and over again since the double top in the 318s from the November to January, that cup formation, remember the cup formation, I measured the left side, right side, and I said the right side is much weaker. Went to a G in the monthly chart, and this is still a very ugly chart. To be able to say, you know what, we're absolutely out of the woods. We are now moving way higher in 2022. You want to see the SMHs that are 210 right now? I would probably want to see them at 258 to 262, and that would mean speed as well as price. Um, that, that I just don't see that. I still see them under pressure. So this says the overall general, the market trend is still in a bear phase, but we are getting closer and closer to to, to mitigating some of the huge negativity if there is a pretty decent rally. And all I can say is, you know, I, I got a, a, some, a statement here, the usual statement in, in uppercase letters, bold letters. Do you ever look at margin debt? It's about to become front page story, even if you will be forced to face a Bitcoin falls below 20,000. It's going to bring out margin calls. I think we will find out. Kids have been buying Bitcoin on credit cards. It's all going to set up the next down leg in stocks, down markets, disclosed fraud, and this market is loaded in fraud. Uh, you know, you can say that at any time, and sometimes when the market's going up, there's fraud, but you don't know it. Usually when the markets really tend to, to, to kind of get the crash mode, that's when you find out, number one, what were the banks doing? Why? How come the banks are always involved in the biggest mistakes in the market ever? They're always. But at this particular point, the XLF, yes, it's acting purely. Today it's up 47 cents at 31.78. Yes, the monthly is at a peak. E, yes, you've got this beautiful arch formation. You know, I talk about that all the time, the measurement of the left side, right side price time match. And oh, I never did. I had that and I changed it. I should have taken it back, put it back in. Um, it doesn't matter. We've gone to the, the we, we've tested a number of times. The, le the left side low after the peak E was made. And that was the week of the 26th of March at 33.00. That was March of 21. Then we made this huge choppy, choppy, choppy move to the upside. In a sense, it almost looks like it was a Chapman wave in, uh, a restart. But it has that character where the price keeps coming back to the low point. This is the low point after E, the one that I just spoke about at 33, round number low. And it still went higher. It still went all the way to the to the 41s. And then it tanked. Remember, we were in Bank of America, had really good profits. And we just finally took the last profit out about a month or so ago and said, we're done. I think that there's a problem here. And the problem I was relating to was that the TLT, that bonds, normally when the markets become highly volatile in, in uh, Wall Street parlance, that means going down. It's very simple. Um, so that volatility usually says that money comes out of the illiquidity of uh, stocks, the, the, the volatility, the going downside of uh, stocks, and goes into the so-called safety of bonds. I did a measured move here from the low of 133.19 back in March of 2021. I said I can take it to the double tops, but I'm going to take it to the midpoint. That was about October at about 142. I put in the vertical line. I said I'm putting in a measured move, and that buy, and it's, this is the exact move, by the May the 13th, week of May the 13th, 2022, there's a chance that if we break under 131, we're going to go a lot lower, and can we do a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside? Well, we did that, had a little mini dreaded H bounce because we, on the weekly basis last week, we took out that low. We're trying to come back again. Uh, this week, I'm sorry, we, we've gone even lower. And um, that just says to me things are different this time. I don't care what anybody says, but we're in the roll their eyes when someone says things are different this time. How can you say things aren't different this time? This is the first time that we've got a... 
basically a rotating recession. I, you know, people talking about recessions. I've been talking about recessions for a long time because this is my own framework. Says that if you look at since you remember, I'm going all over the show. Yeah, I'm trying to put a potpourri of things together because the Fed's coming out today, and what happens to the market results of the Fed's Fed statement is going to be really important. And I'm saying things are different this time because stocks have come down. 20 to, to over 30 percent in different uh, indices in some sectors it's even more and money never went from stocks to bonds in fact bonds came down very sharply but wait a minute Sintas which is overalls uniforms and rentals uh, made an all-time high of 461 it's a 359 right now um, it actually is holding okay but you think of it this way it Certain sectors like Syntas has been in recession for a while. I'll be back in a moment, guys, at 3.13, S&P's at 46. A lot of questions, I'll try to get to that. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Hi, boys. We're back, and we're looking at a couple of questions. Let me just get this. Basil, cash indicator should be high cash and include IAI. Yes, I, I think you're absolutely correct. In fact, just I, that's a great idea. I'm, I'm going to include it. I, I don't need to because um, some of the others that we have really pertain to the broker dealer index, uh, in a sense, because uh, they kind of go down together. But as a clue, as an indicator clue, and the cash, my cash indicator is C is Syntas. I just spoke about that. Whoops, I typed it in the wrong place. Let's put it over there. Uh, Syntas is C T A S. There we go. Um, and it's gone from 461 down to a low yesterday in the 350 area, maybe just under 350. That's below the 352 round number that was in May before it ran up to the 408 area. 
So, yeah, it's not acting well, but it's still certainly holding, uh, Synthes is holding, when you think about the monthly chart, in a monthly chart, this is not bad at all, but uh, it definitely is failing. And as I said, the rotation, but when you think of it, a Amazon is my other one. I, I, they almost all are going in sync to the downside. Amazon, I can't, I, I think by a hair, it took out the left side low. The left side low was the doji candle, 101.26 on the 24th of May, and yesterday's low was 101.43. Now, that's interesting because I was pointing out a particular ETF this morning and, and the last few days to subscribers to my opening call. I say, wow, it is not taking out the left side low, and yet it's been for months one of the weakest ETFs you could ever find. And here we are. Amazon also didn't take out the left side low. But if you're looking at the weekly and monthly charts, I, yeah, yeah, it's IA but uh, for uh, the broker-dealer index, but I, I, yeah, yeah, for Amazon, it just doesn't look good at all. It's going to need a lot of work to even break above the last uh, two weeks ago high, less than two weeks ago, of 120, of 129, or was it 130? Let me just double double check. It was 128.99. So to, to, from 104, it's got to go 20, let's call it 26 points. 26 points from here. Um, I don't know what's going to do it. And that's why I want to, be, I want to get into the long positions but only in, in, in ETFs or indexes because I, I don't see the individual stocks. Look, even a, an Oracle, which evidently had great news the other day, gaps down, three beautiful big red candles, two wonderful gaps. And then yesterday uh, was the day before Monday afternoon, comes out with great news. Tuesday gaps up. It makes a wave Roman candle. It hasn't gone halfway into the wick. If, if there is a 120-minute chart that holds for, I'm going to say for one and a half bars. So if it if it can go for more than 100 minutes under 70.20, Oracle will take out the low of yesterday and then start to fill at least one of the gaps. If it's able in the next three days, now what's today? Wednesday, by Friday or, or Monday. If it has even nicked by one penny the high of 72.43, also had a round number open of 72, and it's uh, below that now. That's not so good. But if it's able to even pop up, it doesn't have to close, but pop up above 72.43, that's saying, oh, this could be a help and say that the, in the in the, within the tech sector, we start to see Oracle uh, uh, at 71.06 right now, 34 cents, O-R-C-L. Moving pretty nicely, filling a this is a, a double island gap. Actually, I haven't seen one of these before. Uh, I have, but not for a long, long time. So that's one thing. Let me say. So going back to the cash index, uh, Amazon's looking terrible. I got a lot of work, and and that's just really talking about the retail sector. I, I'm moving on. I, that's what I do here. You know that I like to use things as stepping stones to a thought process that is interlocked into all the market, not just a particular favorite area. So look at this RTH, the Van Eck Retail EF, which has 20% Amazon, didn't take out the left side low, doesn't look too great in the daily, doesn't look too great in the weekly, and the monthly chart, ah, taking out half the wick of last month so far, not that good. And if you go to the XRT, XRT, that's the retail, uh, this is the S&P retail ETF, which has uh, equal weighted Amazon. Uh, it's pretty much the same chart, but that weekly chart is a lot weaker. And the monthly chart is a PC, which is just sitting there. I don't know if that's going to get to a D at any point, not for quite a while. So that's just saying that if you put try to put it all together, Home Depot will be the final one in my cash index, C-A-S-H, and Home Depot has gone to a lower low. It's gone from the 420 high back in December of 2021 down to a low yesterday in the 276s. Let me just check. 276.59. Trough F. Or, yep, Trough F. There's no new uh, low today. And uh, so all of them, I don't really need the IAI. I, I like the idea. I'm going to be thinking about it. But they are all negative. Oh, sorry, SPY. What's the uh, S? Somebody said S is for SPY. Uh, SPY is the S&P uh, ETF. So here we go, SPY. 
also very poor. Check out the left side low, go on to a leg E. Uh, 380.54 was the left side low in May, and yesterday's low was in the 370 area. Yeah, a lot of work needs to be done. That's why I'm not getting too carried away to the upside until I really see proof that things are happening. So let me just do this quickly. I want to do, I don't know if I did it in, I did it in the update. Look, uh, the dollar's down 31 ticks at 105.17. The MACD is still strong, nothing like it was when it was making the high at 105.01 back in May. Uh, the stochastic was beautiful and flat up in the 90% area, uh, and then it plummeted down to under under 10%. And then we got a major turn to the upside from about 101 area, and it popped up to the most recent high of 105.79. I forgot to put the number in. 105.65. So... I got a feeling we maybe might make the D here because the technicals, are, look at this, 97% in the stochastic. These are fantastic technicals. You're going to have to have some reaction to the Fed that absolutely says dollar is done for now. If you look at the EUR, USD, this is the euro dollar currency pair. This is that dreaded A so far successful. It hasn't taken us at 1.042. Um, up point zero 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 one nine. I can never get those right. Uh, the left side low of 1.035 back on the 13th of May. Screened up to the peak C1, C2 in the Chavway methodology at 1.078. And now it's pulled back. And the daily and the weekly are suggesting we're not quite ready for a major move to the upside. Oh, you can have a bit of a pop, but I don't see that. Now let's go to the dollar-yen currency pair. The yen right now. USDJPY. There you go. That's in leg C. So I, I, I don't see me ready right now for the dollar pullback. It could come very soon. Look at this potential doji candle in the uh, weekly chart for trading at 134.46 down 99 cents. Uh, all I can say is, or 99 ticks, uh, it's in leg C. There's no other A. Oh, I could have counted this as a Chamway Phantom Peak. 130.188, 130.242. Maybe I could call that a, a phantom peak B. I make that red. That's a C, and that becomes a D. But look at this. The bag is strong. It's just 95%. It's just going to have to be some really crazy Fed news later on today that either tanks the yen and the dollar, or else they say they can go a little higher before they start to pull back. And look at this. Gold is up nine, up ten at nineteen twenty-three, but way below all the moving average. I'll be back in a moment. How the chapter does drop the speed of forty-two. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So I was asked about the Chab Wave Trend Gauge. Remember, I, I call it the Chab Wave Trend Gauge because it's Richard Arms uh, Short Term Trading Index. I only use the numbers. I don't even uh, recall just exactly how he uses it because I've used it my way for so long. It made a high of 9.81. I thought there was an average. I thought it was a bad tick, but I kept refreshing and look, that exactly was the price. 981. I think it was around about the 18th of April. I'm just trying to check the data. So I don't seem to be. Yeah, around about the 18th of April, 19th of April. It hit 9.81. And then the market went from, uh, let's see, on the 18th, the low was uh, 34,279. And had a pretty decent rally for three days. It went all the way to 35,256. And then it reversed, had another high uh, gauge trend reading, and it reversed after a little bit of a bounce. And, th and that was the high. In fact, it hasn't gone back. That was the high for this whole phase. And then we had a move of 4.34, well, nothing like 9.81, but 4.34 uh, was the high on the 9th of, I believe it was the 9th of May. And, and the high on the Dow at that time was 32,752, 9th of May. And then there was a bit of a bounce for the next day and a half, and then it went to a lower low. And then it had a bounce, but it never took out that high and went even lower. Then it had a huge rally. Now we're looking at 6.83 uh, 6 on the 13th of June, and the Dow had a high of 31 point, 31,144, was that the high? Yes. And what happened was it just kept going down. So I, I do this, and if enough times, you can see, I don't make, I don't make these indexes up, these, these technical tools. They find me. In other words, years ago when I found this Chapman Wave Chin Gauge, I wasn't really looking for it. I just typed in certain high numbers, certain low numbers, and then it, it jumped out at me one day and I said, you know what, if such and such happens and it, it, it uh, has a high of whatever it is intraday, if it's above a certain number, there's a really good chance you're going to have within two days a really strong S&P futures uh, performance to help the general market and then it could go back to whatever it was doing so within that context and if it's very low the very next day the dow should no matter how high the futures are pre-market the dow should um go negative before it goes positive again and you can see i've, I've x'd out uh, i think i forgot there, there are a couple of times it misses i think i've x'd out i forgot to x out one of them but other times, it's had a really good reading, and on the upside, it's had a very good reading of having at least the internet, and it says, be as negative as you want, but just be prepared. There could be a really good balance, and it, it could, should, should come, and then I usually tell you what, what period of the day it's going to be. All right, with that context, uh, today, there's no reading on the, on the uh, Chun gauge. The day is young, but so far, no reading, and all I can say is, what, if you look at this right side chart, you can see that the Dow itself went the nine period cross positive for a period, and now it's, it's a sell. It needs cross negative, and it's in that sell mode. And now the Dow is giving back some of the gains. And I wanted to say, I, I should have said it right at the beginning of, the, of my session, I wanted to say, 
whenever the Fed, whenever there's a Fed speak, and yesterday, for some reason, I'm sorry, subscribers, I, I thought that there was not an announcement, but I thought there was going to be an open, a bit of a more open discussion on a Tuesday about what the Fed was going to do. There were rumors, but it wasn't a discussion. So we got stopped out of one of our positions. We got back in almost at the same level today, but it actually held everything looked good. It would have been nice just to have stuck in the one position, but it's okay. And um, uh, so today is the real Fed speed because after 2 o'clock, 2 to 2.30, 2 that's when a lot of things can happen. So what happens on Fed speed day is that whatever the market's doing is sharply down, it kind of comes back towards the Fed speak. If it's sharply up, it'll come down towards, and it just kind of meanders and waits and waits and waits. So all I'm, I'm, I'm expecting here is, and I know there are people thinking there's going to be a rip to the upside, and there are a whole, uh, just a slew of people from what I'm gathering over the last, certainly in the last couple of days when I was away, and people, just general people I spoke to, just lay people, who had nothing, no, no clues to what I do. Just the negativity was unbelievable. And that just says to me, you know what? Um, F slash C. You know what? We could be looking at an upside surprise in the market. But I have to say, in the bigger picture, I still think there's a lot of work to be done based on the charts that I showed you a little earlier on. So that says trading wise, yep, we, we are in trading positions. But in real positions, I, I think we can add to those positions if there's a really nice takeoff today. Uh, but there are so many mixed signals. And that's what I was saying. You can roll your eyes as much as you want. But I've been saying for a year and a half, the reason why it's different this time is because my mantra for 20, 30 years of the Japanization of, of American bond yields going to 0% to copy the Japanese, a year ago I said, uh uh and last November, December, I said, you know what? I think we're looking at a change where I'm not going to talk about Zimbabwe, but I am looking at the other side of the coin. And look at this. You won't believe it. And I'll show it today because it's so important. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, new. There it is. This is the 30-year, 10-year, and 5-year weekly T-bond and T-note yields. White is the 30-year. Brown is the 10-year. Uh, and cyan is the oh my god look at that oh and look at look at the cyan look at the five year spiraling higher whoa we've we I don't remember seeing this for a long long time so you've got um, the the thirty thirty four point forty six we've gone now to thirty four point thirty six let me just change that thirty four point I think I said thirty six or thirty four point thirty six let's call it thirty six for now. 36. This is the this is the middle of the week, and we're looking at what? We're looking at the 30-year. But look at the five-year. Screaming. I mean, talk about a yield inversion. Okay. So we've got to be watching this really closely. Look at the... Oh, that's what I did. And that should be wood. I knew I did something the other day by mistake. I couldn't figure out where it is. Look at the global ch timber and forestry ETF has plummeted. This is my one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. I said that's conservative. The next level would be to take it uh, from a doji candle. That will be this candle here. Yeah, we haven't got there yet. So look at this. This is with the global timber and forestry ETF. Very weak. In fact, I don't want to keep this here as if it's an important thing. I'll just make it dark. There you are. That is important. And look at the um, Philadelphia Housing Index. Lower, lower, and lower. It keeps low, making lower highs and lower lows. So this is an important moment. So to expect that, oh, all of a sudden, the Fed, by saying 75 or, uh, or 100 uh, basis points, uh, is going to make a difference, it's going to take a lot more than that because um, the way that – think super tanker – a 40-year bull market in bonds, you're not going to get a major turn, you know, to to the to the downside uh, in, in one split second. It takes a while for them to for the, for the, for the yields to turn. So we can get these little blips and things, but my my guess is that we've got to consider that yields are a major factor. And the question uh, coming back here from Paul is why aren't banks running on interest rates again? You don't understand interest rates. You know, I perhaps in the, as an economist, I, as a non-economist, I have no clues in interest rates. Believe me, I do know about interest rates. I knew that in 1983, don't take out 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I was notating this as I always do. Either I'm trading it or I'm not trading, but I'm always notating it because that's how I practice my methodology. It's like tennis or practice with strokes or golf, whatever it is. Um, and we made a peak D. Remember the Chapman Wave peak Ds are really important. You can go to an E, but it's that D. You start saying, uh, are we recycling higher? What are we doing? Well, it went from a D to an E back at 8.50 this morning and then pulled back sharply, made a cup formation. Remember the patterns, three patterns we look at, cup formation, arch formation, and straight line. So these are two cup formations. Then it makes a formula an arch, and then it goes higher. It pulls back, starts a brand new move. And what does it do? It starts to rally at the 200. Look how important this orange line, the 200 period moving average is. And what does it do? It rallies from a low at about 9.35. It goes peak A, B, C, D. And then it has a, a recycle. It goes peak A, B, C. And it makes a doji D right there as the show was starting at 10.09. I drew that in. Um, put the down arrow in. And now what happened is it went from green to pink. And that's a negative. And since it's been pink at about uh, 37.88, the, two, the um, one minute E mini uh, has pulled back and it's now at 37.66. It tried to hold eight times at the 200 period moving average. That became support, then resistance, and now it's failed. Um, and that's how important these taking. So, so a couple of people have asked me about. Uh, would I be able to uh, do this maybe during the show a couple of times? Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do a couple of, maybe tomorrow and Wednesday and Friday, we'll do some live stuff. So 
K E uh, K. Yes, I think I will. I'll do that. K E W B. This is Queb. Queb is the China uh, Crane Shares uh, CSI China Internet ETF. Uh, made a high of 144 plummets down to 24 and had a spectacular rally to 34 peak A, B, C and made a D and now it's digesting gains. It's gonna, I think what happens with the market today, Dow's only up 186. Be careful. You want to see what the market does. I don't care what the, the, the Fed says. What does the market do? If it's over 190 points at 245 this afternoon, that's a good sign. If it's uh, under uh, 90 points, that's a lot of the same. I'll see you.